Hey Rat Bags, it's Jade. Forever Skies, a new update has just gone live. The gardening update. It's a definite need for me to see this kind of content. I rated Forever Skies a lot, I hyped it up before its release, and then when it launched, I enjoyed it. But there were definitely some criticisms that became more apparent as I played, and frankly, it was just too short of a game and too much of a cost in terms of time and money to really, really wholeheartedly recommend. Since then I've had a few updates, but I haven't really seen anything that's wanted to draw me back completely, until today. The airship gardening update does look pretty good. You now can grow a whole bunch of crops, they've reworked the story, there's new locations to discover, and that's definitely a big, big bonus. The game just simply wasn't very replayable, and it was just kind of boring exploring only a couple of places. Even though you fly around and go to all these different ruins, it became very samey very quickly. So I've still got a bit of a critical eye on it. I am still a bit grumpy that they're going as a PlayStation exclusive instead of releasing on all platforms. But I've always liked the idea of this game. And once they add multiplayer and they keep fleshing it out with updates like this, I definitely feel like it's gonna be worth a revisit. So today I'm gonna to go through the patch notes and the gist of the update so you guys can make up your own mind whether to visit it again or to try it out for the first time. Leave a like, find it useful, this video, and let's go. Forever Skies team are recommending you start a new game save. With the way that progression will work and exploring some of these places, it is definitely recommended to get a fresh start. Obviously that will be up to you, you can continue if you want to your older save. Obviously the gardening is a huge focus, it's going to be apparently an important role in the game loop. You can grow a few crops for food and progressing in the story, but if you really want to go all out they are recommending to embrace the automation and the sprinkler system. The basic equipment like pots and water tanks you'll find scattered in and around lots of ruins and some of the decayed areas, but things like distillers and water generators are going to be a little bit more rare. Big criticism I had of the game was the way that inventory management kind of was handled. It was really basic and just not up to scratch, where well, now you can stack stuff and I think they've made some improvements in the last few updates to that as well. You'll be able to get a special fertilizer from distiller. This fertilizer is made from rotten food. Yes, you now have a purpose for it. And plants that only grow in the underdust will be able to be grown out of it now once you've got the dust fertilizer and add it to the gardening pot. And this is the real deal, the hunt for the cure. This is kind of exciting stuff I really want them to lean into more. The whole point of the game is to mess around with viruses and contagions, coming up with a cure. But I want to see that involved more where we get lots more buffs or new ways to play the game because we've infected ourselves with all sorts. I won't go through the spoiler section there talking about the story. But yes, there is a brand new suburb map added to the game, apparently four times larger than the current Underdust map. It is going to be more expansive and open and you will have lots more landmarks to help guide you. They're also adding a large oxygen tank so that you'll be able to explore a little bit easier too. Also, you'll be going here for the new plant seeds, a new upgraded knife. This is the air cutter. I have said that combat isn't necessarily going to be a focus just yet with this update, but they are looking to work on it straight after this. They want to get it just right as, yeah, it's pretty lackluster at the moment. And yeah, the reason they're asking people to start again is because they've changed and rewritten a bunch of stuff. Mission objectives have been rewritten to give players a better and more immersive experience. They've had mission reports summarizing main quest milestones for the player upon return to the airship from main quest locations. More lore scenes added. Story-related AI voice lines added. Ooh. New cutscenes, design, art and gameplay improvements to existing locations like radio towers, overgrown radio towers, gardens and descent lifts, and city ruins improved visually. This is the brand new customised ball air bloom model that you can now place. It's part of the bloom range. And yeah, it looks really colourful. Again, something the game needed. You could paint and customise a lot of the airships, but it took a lot of effort to get some of that paint. And I kind of like the wacky designs we've got going on here. Some of this stuff is going to be in their new reworked data card system. They've introduced a better and cleaner HUD for players. And you'll be able to get a flashlight now from any dead body that you come across in any of the basic radio towers. So here's the patch notes in full. Knuckle down. Let's go. New content. Small garden pot. Small water tank. Sprinkler. Large garden pot. Large sprinkler. Water tank. Pipes. Distiller. Pipe port generator. And pipe connected membrane. New tools, the air cutter, big oxygen tank, magnetic lure, catch other items in addition to food, under dust access module item. Plants and seeds, sleeping lily plant, lee fire plant, north star plant, pig smile plant, sleeping lily seeds, lee fire seeds, north star seeds, pig smile seeds, breath nut seeds, petite bruise flower seeds, bruise flower seeds, 
petite ashtray seeds, canola multi-doit seeds, coffee nut seeds, dust daisy seeds, green colander seeds, ink bulb, lobster, meteor, sun melon, and tuba seeds. Boiled leaf fire, boiled pig smile is two new food types. Resources, you've now got dust fertilizer, sulfur fertilizer, mantis feces, and chitin. Paints have added a new bloom theme. Decorations, got posters of automatic irrigation system and the sprinkler. And yes, your frozen wishes update, that was like a limited time event they had for Christmas. All the unlocks for that should be in the game too. Airship modules, bloom wall, bloom ceiling, bloom floor ceiling, bloom door. Player current immunity level can be seen in the inventory backpack menu. Chronic diseases have been added. When your immunity is low, diseases become more dangerous and need more specialized ways of treatment. Waiting them out no longer works. Footstep sounds with different terrains. Narration, chapter two of the story, in order to find a cure for the virus that slowly kills you, you have to travel to the depths of the underdust to find a century long lost cure. Mission reports, summarizing main quest milestones for the player upon return to the airship from the main quest locations, new lore scenes for second lift and underdust locations, gardening tutorials in data tablets. They've also added chronic disease tutorial and more new cutscenes have been added. In the world, you'll find the overgrown lift, a new lift to the underdust location added, and the suburbs, the new underdust second location. Other stuff, the magnetic fishing lure, allowing you to catch other things other than food. Some paint cartridges can now be crafted from plants grown aboard an airship only. HUD improvements, player parameters with a clearly distinguished stamina energy and radiation zones alert. Flashlight power status added. Perishable food, plants and medicine now stack in player's inventory. They've changed that the flashlight can be found on a corpse and radio tower locations. Immunity reworked, it changes with the story progress only. It affects the probability of infection after getting in touch with virus carriers. You cannot prevent those losses, but you can find a way to improve it temporarily. All virus research is displayed in studies menu after crafting virus sample analyzer. Fungal meningitis name change to meningitis. Medical bedroll in disease loop improved, e.g. gives a free immunity booster. Knife central icon is visible as long as hitting an object can give some resource. Part of narration, the main quest path has been reworked. It should be more immersive and understandable. Sagittarius expedition, dead crew members location slightly changed to differentiate them from the remains of the last people living on Earth centuries ago. Small story tweaks, database entries, pictures and text updated. In the world, with the greenhouse towers, they've added additional gates in radiation sheds. Overgrown towers, they've refactored, paths more visible, source of early gardening devices and consumables. Designs and art improvements have been added to the radio towers. Wrecked automatic deck extractor moved to a greenhouse tower. Wrecked filtering deck extractor moved to an infected garden. Wrecked upgrade station moved to first under dust. Wrecked ship workstation moved to descent under the dust upper floor. Slightly reduced the amount of small locations to be found in the world. Under dust oxygen fillers are now more visible. Epoxy resource was moved to the under dust. Small amounts of it could be still be found on greenhouse tower locations, but now behind a progression gate. Slightly reduced the amount of plants in the world. Descent under the dust, the battery next to the computer was removed, the fuse box was added to turn off beacon, and descent under the dust is a more visible upper floor path. Descent under the dust requires an access module instead of the solid state battery. Overgrown lift requires advanced access module. Infected gardens have more loot, rooftops have more loot. Other data card distribution rewords. You won't find new paint themes, for example, unless you've researched and crafted the paint tool, data cards will spawn more frequently. Crossbow sound effects updated. Medical bed, station animation tweaks, lots of performance stuff. Clean water now gives 30 water instead of 25. Canned gives 30 instead of 25. Boiled moth still gives 25 food instead of 15. And boiled patat now gives 30 food instead of 25. Boiled melon now gives 30 water. Basic lure can catch rotten food, dust lettuce, and dust moths. The mantis gland now appears as a cause of hemorrhagic fever in the studies virus sample analyzer menu. The quest for finding Noah's notes and mantis glands have been reworked for clarity. Change to get instead of find. Noah's notes will respawn on all under dust locations until picked up. This ends the find traces of Noah in tunnels under the dust quest and glass shard states are properly saved. Proper visuals for cooked green colander, canola, multi duet, coffee nut, dust daisy and dust moth. A new quest was added for saves that have already completed the first under dust section. This backwards compatibility quest will bring players immunity status and immunity boost to research recipes in line with those players that are playing for a new save and lots of performance issues. Apparently they've got another update that's going to go live next few weeks and it will have content rather than just bug fixes. So that's pretty good. 
So all in all, good stuff. As I said at the start of the video, I was ended up being quite critical of the game after getting through the majority of it and really taking a step back and looking. It just didn't really warrant my time, let alone the actual value in buying it. Definitely felt like it was still just too much of a shell of a game rather than something that I would want to spend more and more hours in. But that's what early access is for some games. It is about really fleshing them out. And if they carry on with updates like this, then I'd be definitely more confident in really giving it a good go once the 1.0 update is here, or maybe the next update. With it launching on PlayStation as well, I think it's going to bring it to a wider range of people, and that would also help me decide to actually put some more content out for it. But you never know, if you really want to see me play this, leave a comment down below. I might be able to fit it in on stream this week. Otherwise, one definitely I'm going to keep my eye on and hoping that they carry on improving like this update. Until next time, Ratbags, laters.